Hi, this is Graham from Jenham's Astro. I've had the SkyMax 127 for a couple of months now, and this video is to give you some initial feedback on my experiences with using the scope. Now here in the UK, it's the middle of summer, so the sky isn't dark and certainly the nights are short. So there are limited opportunities to give the scope a proper uh, test. But basically what I've done is pulled together some video of some uh, observations of the moon and of Jupiter so that we can get a first idea of the quality of the scope. So this is the setup. I've got the, the 127 on top of an HEQ5 Pro equatorial mount. And as you can see, the targets were relatively low in the sky uh, when I was taking the video. Um, coming around the back of the scope, we can see that I'm using a 2 times Barlow, my trusty Teleview Barlow, and I'm using an a ZWO camera, which is an ASI 120 color camera. So the first target uh, was Copernicus, a very prominent crater. This is on day 11 of the lunar cycle, and I was quite happy that it could achieve a good focus um, with a bit of trial and error and quite a good image of the crater and the adjacent uh, landscape. And after that, what I've done is I've taken the video through Registax, I've taken the best 50% uh, of the frames and this is the result. Okay, moving on to the second target is the crater Proclus, which is um, on the edge of the Mare Crisium. And prominent ray uh, network, bright rays emanating from this crater. And once again, took the video through Registax half the frames and a little bit of wavelet sharpening and that's the result. Now we're on to the uh, Bay of Rainbows, one of my favourite targets. A um, little bit lower light levels this time but I think you can get a reasonable idea that you get a nice clear view of the, uh, of the target close to the Terminator this time. And then same again, best 348 frames, <laughs> roughly half the frames this time, and giving a nice clear image. Uh, so this compares quite well to the C90 that I've been using, uh, slightly better with this scope. And then finally, moving on to the crater Plato. Uh, easy to find, just along a little way from uh, Bay of Rainbows. And also you can see the Alpine Valley off to the side. So finally, the result, looking at Registax, quite happy with that. Only 280 frames this time, but it's shown the crater very well. And uh, also you can see the, the valley over there um, on the right of the frame. Okay, so moving on to Jupiter. So this is the video taken straight from the camera. Uh, you can see uh, the planet with the main equatorial bounds and the great red spot. And you can also see one of the Galilean moons to the left of the planet. And pretty good seeing this night, even though Jupiter is quite low in the sky. And then as before, I've taken the video through uh, Registax. This time I took about a thousand frames and played around with the wavelets in the usual trial and error fashion and uh, quite happy with that result. Now finally, just something a little bit different. People sometimes ask me, what can you actually see through the scope by looking through the eyepiece? So this time I put my iPhone over the top of the standard 25 millimeter uh, eyepiece and used the Nightcap Pro app. Uh, it's on another night, you can see four of the Galilean moons. Um, and at this stage, the obviously the planet itself is overexposed. But if we play around with the app, we can do something about that. We can just reduce the exposure. As we do that, the, the moons start to disappear. This gives you a bit of an idea of what you can see just visually looking over the eyepiece, um, perhaps with a Barlow or using the, the higher powered standard eyepiece. So what are my impressions of the uh, Skywatcher Skymax 127? Well, generally, I think the initial use has been uh, quite positive. I've been quite happy with the with the shots that I've got. Um, three points, um, not in any particular order. Um, three things I've noted using the scope. Firstly, the focus knob is um, 
is relatively stiff. Now, if you're trying to do fine focus on a planet, uh, that could be an issue if you've got a lightweight mount. Um, using the scope on, a, on an HEQ5 uh, Pro is no problem at all because um, we don't really doesn't really induce any great vibration but but it might be something you notice on a lightweight mount. The red dot finder you need to play around with it a little bit to get it precisely aligned with the main optical tube assembly you might have to shim the uh, bracket here just to get it to point exactly lined up with the main scope again easy to achieve not a real problem. I guess the main thing to note is that even though I've uh, titled this video SkyMax 127 um, it isn't obviously a telescope that is quite what it appears in terms of aperture so I've repeated the operating aperture test that I did on the SkyMax 150 some time ago and it reveals that this 127mm uh, scope is operating um, with an aperture of 119mm. Now that seems to tally with uh, reports uh, from other users and I guess it's a feature of the design either undersized mirror or maybe some baffling or some uh, certainly some stop somewhere in the system means that you're not actually getting a full five inch aperture scope and I think everybody knows that's the case for these designs of Mac and perhaps Skywatcher would be better off marketing it more accurately maybe we'd accept this as a Skymax 120 but in reality doesn't make any difference not really but it is a little bit of a bugbear that these particular scopes don't operate at the full advertised aperture. Okay so having said that um, nothing really negative to report aside from that I'm looking forward to using the scope a bit more as the nights get darker so far very encouraging and I'll continue to give feedback when I've had a look at a few more astro objects. Okay thanks for watching.